فالشباب هم الجيل الذي يتحمل المسؤولية عن كبار السن ويحل محلهم في الأمة فيجب العناية بهم وتربيتهم تربية الصحيحة السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفر ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أما بعد Then today it brings me pleasure to be with my brothers and sisters who have gathered in Riyadh today the 30th of September 2022 so that we may benefit from each other and benefit from some of the words of our noble scholars who cite the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and from that is the advice of some of our scholars such as Sheikh Abdul Aziz bin Baz and Sheikh Saleh bin Fawzan bin Abdullah al-Fawzan hafizahullahu ta'ala so I want to mention an affair inshallah without diverting inshallah into several different topics which can happen and there is no harm in that but I want to begin inshallah with mentioning some advice to parents and that is that our Lord has commanded the parents to cultivate their children and he has commanded the youth, the shabab with steadfastness and Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said regarding the youth and this is my advice to the shabab also to pay attention to the young men and women to pay attention to these words of Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and that is that the prophet alayhi salatu was salam he said سَبَعَةٌ يُذِلُّهُمُ اللَّهُ فِي ذِلِّهِ يَوْمَ لَا ذِلَّ إِلَّا ذِلُّهُ إمام عادل وشاب نشأ في إبادة الله. This hadith, wherein Allah's Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم said that there will be seven who will be shaded in the shade of Allah, and what is intended here is the shade of the throne of Allah سبحانه وتعالى. On a day when there is no shade except for the shade that is offered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. On that day, my brothers and sisters, and especially those of you who are young and paying attention, on that day when the sun will be drawn close to a distance of a mile and the people will be anxious as to what is going to happen, a day of terror, a day where a person will be afraid and uncertain as to what will happen to him. On that day, Allah will, say, will shade seven. And one of them, as he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Imam Adil, and that was the first one that he mentioned, a just ruler. And the second one, that he mentioned Shabun, a young person who is raised upon the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
So Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon the tongue of his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ma yantiqu anil hawa and he does not speak from his desires that he singled out the youth, the young people that they will be shaded because they were raised upon the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this applies to both boys and girls males and females, young men and young women just as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man ala jariyataini, to whomsoever raises two young girls, two daughters, up until they reach the age of adulthood, then they will be with me in the hereafter. That on yawm al-qiyamah, they'll be next to Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The one who raises two girls, upon piety, upon righteousness. As for the hadith of the shaded, and this applies to young men and to young women. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he would place great emphasis upon raising and cultivating young people because they are the future of this ummah. As we pass away, and we are passing away, in age, in our abilities. So who takes over from us except our youth, our sons, our daughters, our offspring, the next generation? And Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would single out young people with pieces of advice as he himself Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was entering into old age. As he was getting older in his 50s, he died at the age of 63. He would raise the youth and he would emphasize the importance that they have to offer to the ummah so long as they are guided. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, preserving the chastity of the youth, the honor of youth, the strength of youth, the energy of youth, the vitality of youth, the dynamism of youth, by encouraging them to build families, to get married. As he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ya Ma'ashir al-Shabaab, Man istita'a min, minkum al-ba'ata fal yatazawwaj. O oh youth, those of you among you who are able to get married, then let them do so. If they have the ability, then let them do so. And whomsoever is not able to get married, then he should take to fasting. For indeed it is a shield It is a shield meaning From that which is That which is impermissible Of relations And the messenger of Allah Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Emphasized this to the youth Because he knows He knows the affair Of youth being led astray By the fitna Of the opposite sex The fitna of women And that is predominant Musta'an, the fitna of women because of the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made women alluring to men and that has not ceased till this day and that is good that Allah has made women alluring to men but the fact that men desire women that desire should only be fulfilled in a manner that is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it amazes me, my brothers and sisters, those of you who are parents and listening, that you delay the marriage of your daughters and you delay the marriage of your sons, that you delay them up until they are in their 20s or even in their 30s. The longer that you leave women unmarried, the harder it becomes for them to conceive. In their 30s, they have lost much of their fertility and their ability to reproduce. In their 30s, never mind in their 40s and 50s. By the age of 30, a woman should already have five or six children. And that's the reality. It may not be the liberal thing to say today because the most important thing and the biggest lie that women have been told in our times is that career is more important than family. Education and ambition 
is more important than having children, than having a stable home, than being married to a loving and caring husband. That is a lie that women have been told. And it is a lie to say to them that they will be happy chasing a career, chasing their ambitions in the working environment. This is a lie that women have been told. And it is a lie that parents have swallowed. My brothers and sisters, get your children married when they are young, when they are 17, 18, 19, get them married before they're 20. Work hard to do that and to achieve that. That should be a goal. We have inverted our priorities, my brothers and sisters. We have turned things upon their heads. We regard the degree the medicine degree, the dentistry degree. You want your daughters to be medics and dentists looking down people's throats or looking for the athlete's foot in their, between their toes and their feet. You, you regard that to be more important as a career choice than getting married and raising children. I advise you, like I would advise my own children, my own brother, my own sister. Marry. Marry your children off young. But that requires that you raise them as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. وَشَابٌ نَشَأَ فِي إِبَادَةِ اللَّهِ A youth that is raised upon the ibadah of Allah will know the significance and the importance of raising the next generation. But if you did not raise them upon the ibadah of Allah, you raise them upon dunya and the importance of dunya and the importance of accumulating wealth and satisfying desires and following pastimes and hobbies rather than the importance of seeking knowledge and obeying Allah even if they do not become students of knowledge then that is not something that is expected for everyone but at least they should have a desire and love to obey Allah. And this is something that we find as our communities, meaning the communities of the Muslims generally, especially where they are minorities. And also in the society that you live in. Because in the society that you live in, in Muslim countries, sometimes we let down the guard. We think that it is the state's job to protect our children from evil but the prime role of guardianship it lies with the parents mother and father they are the prime carers the protectors the nurturers the society or the dola or the state is there as a safety net but that safety net is not always something that is in common with your ideals not in every society, not in every country. So when you let your guard down and you let your children go, you will lose them. Wallahu musta'an, you will lose them. And as Shaykh al-Fawzan, hafidhullahu ta'ala, he said, prevention is better than cure. Do not be in a state where your family has fallen apart and you've lost your children and they're involved in all types of evil conduct and immorality and then you decide I need to do something that is cure prevention is what? prevention is as the Prophet ﷺ said the youth that is raised upon the ibadah of Allah what is the ibadah of Allah? the ibadah of Allah is built upon tawheed and it is built upon the sunnah that is what the ibadah of Allah is built upon Tawheed meaning that you single out Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone with your worship, with your seeking of his aid, his assistance, sajda, praying in jama'ah, seeking knowledge, obedience to parents. All of this comes under the heading of singling out Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in worship because when you serve your parents for the sake of Allah, only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you for that. 
and that your parents will benefit from that and they will make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala seeking forgiveness for you and mercy for you and likewise that you pray on time that you establish the prayer you pay the zakah you fast the month of Ramadan you do all that which Allah has commanded you and you keep away from that which Allah has prohibited the sunnah which teaches you how to worship Allah what are those ways and means of coming closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you raise your children upon this constantly from the age of comprehension up until they reach adulthood and they are independent of you and they are married and they are able to stand on their own two feet and move on with their life you are responsible parents don't invert and switch the priorities of the Sharia to what you think is best. The priorities of the Sharia are the priorities of the Sharia. You cannot change them because you're looking at your environment. You're looking at your neighbors. You're looking at what car they drive. You're looking at, mashallah, look, his son is at Harvard. Fulan, his son is studying economics. Fulan's daughter, she's become a dentist. So now you think you need to do the same so that you can get that, you know, that, 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 that badge of glory so you can put that certificate on the wall and say look I'm proud of my daughter or I'm proud of my son it does not mean that you do not pursue education of course not education is important to live in the dunya is important children being able to survive in this world by learning some of the secular sciences whether it be engineering something useful whether it be engineering, electronics, computer science, something that is going to earn for them. Women who can learn something through online degrees, sitting at home, in their parents' home, so they don't have to leave the home. So they can educate themselves, so they can educate their children when that time comes. That is tremendously important, my brothers and sisters, especially those of you who are parents, to understand this affair. Because many Muslims, they don't understand. The Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, used to begin with the children young. So there was, in the time of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that narration from Amr bin Abi Salama. And he was the foster child in the house of Allah's Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, saw him one day eating. So he said to him, Ya Ghulam, he said, oh young boy, Sammillah, say Bismillah. Wa kul bi yaminik, and eat with your right hand. Wa kul mimma yalik, and eat from that which is close to you. This is Allah's messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, right from a young age. He wouldn't just leave them to get on with it. Do what you want, it doesn't matter, ya ghulam. Ya bunaya, it doesn't matter, do what you want. Rather, the Prophet wasallam would start cultivation of the children at a very young age. In another narration, the Prophet wasallam said to Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma, when he was still a young boy, when he was still a small boy, he said, Ya Ghulam, he said, Oh, young boy, be mindful of Allah and he will protect you. Be mindful of Allah and he will protect you. And then he said, and be mindful of Allah and you will find him in front of you. Imagine saying that to a young boy. A man like Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Listen to these profound words that sometimes we listen to but we skim over them and we don't ponder over them. The messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is focusing upon Abdullah ibn Abbas whilst he was a boy getting him ready for adulthood Ya Ghulam oh young boy so he's calling him drawing his attention to him listen to me indeed I will teach you some words I will teach you some kalam kalimat remember Allah 
Be mindful of Allah and He will protect you. Be mindful of Allah and you will find Him in front of you. And if you ask, oh boy, oh young boy, then ask of Allah. If you ask, fas'alillah. Ask Allah. Meaning don't look at the people. Look at Allah. Look for Allah. Meaning seek from Allah. Ask Allah. And when you need help, fasta'im billah. And when you seek help, then seek the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Brothers and sisters, what is more important in the lives of your children? What is more important for you as it relates to your youth as they enter into adulthood? Is it not that you want this generation that you are raising, that they carry the deen into the next generation so that when you die, they can make dua for you? And they can give sadaqah on your behalf. And when they have children, their children will be upon sunnah and Islam and Salafiyyah. That they will be upon piety, not fornicators. Those who are seeking out to go to the nightclubs and listen to music and going to concerts, yes, even in our Muslim countries, children have opportunities. Avenues are being, have opened for them to indulge in that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made impermissible of music and dancing and frivolity even in some countries promiscuity how do you protect your children from that do you think by changing the goal by changing their ambitions and what they seek as being important to something other than the deen that that is going to help them that is going to put them on the straight path and this is my straight path, so follow it, as, the, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. Or will it send them astray? Ask yourself, O oh brother, O oh sister, and likewise the youth, you young ones that are sitting and listening, pay attention. You are not children. Those of you who are past the age of puberty, you are no longer children. You are men and you are women. Stop behaving like children. Grow up. Grow up and take the responsibility of being adults who are answerable before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Behave like adults in your homes. Behave like adults in front of your parents. These are duties that are upon you, O oh young people. Do that which your Prophet wasallam has commanded you with. So you may be counted amongst those who are shaded on that day. A day wherein there is no shade except for his shade. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a curse in a narration. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is amazed at a youth who does not display immature behavior. And he protects his youth from sin and misguidance. Do you protect your years, your youth from sins or do you go out and seek for sins do you want to see them on your phone are you one of those who looks at those YouTube videos that you know are haram are you from those who listens to music hiding in your room or sitting in your room away from your parents thinking that no one is watching you but you do not know that Allah is a raqib over you have the muraqabatullah have this Sense that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching you at all times. You are responsible for yourselves. Ya shabab. Young men, young women. If you have passed the age of puberty and you know if you have. Then you are responsible for yourselves. You are responsible for your prayer. For your fasting. For your obedience to Allah, your obedience to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And as parents, you are responsible in front of Allah regarding the tawjih of your children, the, the direction 
and the guidance of your children. Allah placed you in charge over them. The earlier you start, the better for you. The more balanced your children will be. Your children will be children who are moderate, not falling short and not going to extremes because you started on them young. You placed responsibility upon their shoulders from a young age in accordance to their age, not beyond their age. You commanded them to pray as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam commanded you. When he said, Muru awlada kum bis salati li sabi'in. Command your children with the prayer at the age of seven, so you commanded them. My brothers and sisters, this affair is important. And as Sheikh Al-Fawzan said, and this command is not specific only for the prayer. Rather, the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned it because it is the most important type of worship due to the fact that whoever maintains the prayers, then he will maintain other than the prayers even more so. So likewise with their manners that you rectify the manners of your children, the etiquette of your children, teaching them to dislike sin, immorality, lewd behavior, promiscuity. Rectify your houses, O oh parents. Keep your children close to you so they are not children of the street. Make sure that your children's priorities are correct. That they study the deen of Allah to a competent level. They understand the hierarchy in the home. That it is the father. He is in charge of the house. So if I am a male, if I am a man, then inshallah one day I'll be in charge of the house. But I'll be just and I'll be truthful and I'll be sincere and I will provide and I will care for them and I will look after them and I will be honest and I will not lie and I will not cheat. These are values that Islam teaches us. These are values that Islam teaches us and many of us we don't pay attention because we're busy earning money. So the natural order in the minds of these people is that my children will follow the same path and just spend their lives earning money. Your sons will shave off their beards. Your daughters will become easy going with the hijab. They will leave the house wearing makeup with their faces uncovered. Their jilbabs will become open, revealing their garments underneath. Or they will wear tighter and tighter garments, higher and higher heels. And this will slip you by as parents because you are inattentive. Your children will come home with strange haircuts, with kaza, or with braids, and you will not pay attention. And you will become weaker and weaker with respect to your children. And that is a slippery slope. And it baffles me sometimes my brothers and sisters when a parent tells me how good their child is and then they say mashallah my child does not cheat mashallah my child does not drink he does not smoke he does not chase girls so when he's to him this is these these words of negation are words of praise which they are in a way but that is not the way that we look at things because that should be a given. My child not fornicating, not watching movies, not listening to music, not smoking, not taking drugs, not chasing girls, not shaving his beard, not following the haircuts of the kuffar should be a given. When, I'm, when you want your son to marry a woman, another you know, someone else's daughter and you say, MashaAllah, my son doesn't smoke. MashaAllah, my son doesn't listen to music, doesn't watch movies. This is all in the negative, meaning that you are negating these evil traits. That's fine. But where's the positive? What, what is it that he has to offer? MashaAllah, he studied Usul al-Thalatha. Al-Usul al-Thalatha, he studied it. He studied Sharh al-Sunnah. 
He's memorized such and such from the Quran. He, is, he understands Arabic. He is keen to go to the rules and conferences. He looks after his parents. He often serves his mother and father with breakfast and dinner. He is good to his sisters. He is good to his grandparents. He sits and he reads books that we buy for him in English or Arabic or whatever language, Urdu, whatever you speak. He reads them and he acts upon what he knows. His friendship is good. His companions all pray. They are eager to attend conferences and durus. They talk about how rectification is supposed to take place in their lives and in their homes. He keeps his bedroom tidy. He makes his bed in the morning. He doesn't wait for the maid or for mother or his sister to come and clean his bedroom. You know, these are important things. These are positives now. And likewise with the girls, she knows how to cook. She's domesticated. She's good to her father. She's good to her mother. She reads the Quran every day. She makes her morning supplications, evening supplications. She's good at making cakes and baking them and sending them to her aunties and to her grandmother and grandfather. She's always well presented. She bathes and she keeps herself clean. She wears iron clothes. She always asks her mother and father if they need anything. These are positive things. Now you sit in a meeting between a boy and a girl. First question, how many GCSEs do you have? What degree are you doing? What do you intend to do? Do you want to be an accountant or a banker? These are important. Sometimes these questions are asked to a girl. Do you have a degree? What grade did you get? Two, one, first. Are you doing a master's? Do you intend to go on? Are you a good dentist? This is where people are going these days. That's the direction. Look at the first, the former, and look at the latter. The former will shade a person on the day of judgment when there is no shade except for Allah. That earns the pleasure of Allah because it is obedience and goodness and piety and righteousness. Whereas the latter, though they may sound good, but to prioritize them and to place them at the head of the affair, that is calamitous. And that is a disaster. That is a disaster in parenting and cultivation. Character, shakhsiya, ikhlas, sidq. These are the things that need to be inculcated in children. The desire for ilm, the desire to obey Allah. Also, of course, the importance of earning for a man. Being honorable and noble and walking with his head raised, knowing that he's not begging from the people. Al-yadul uliya khayrun min al sufla. The upper hand is better than the lower hand, so he knows I have to go out and earn. So yes, I will do what I need to do. Maybe I'll become an engineer. I'll become a car mechanic. I'll become a builder. I'll become a construction engineer. I'll become an architect. Because I have to feed my wife and children and my mother and my father in their old age. Important, my brothers and sisters. Ponder over what I've said today. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us all. And I say to you two lines of poetry that have been stated by Shaykh al-Fawzan. Hafizahullah ta'ala. He said, before he mentioned those words, he said, so, O parents, this requires from your side care and concern, patience and persistence. It requires from you an immense amount of striving. And especially in these times where in the waves of fit and strike and clash from every side. So much so that our youth have become sheep in a land of predators. And as the poet said, whoever shepherds his sheep in a land of predators and then he falls asleep, 
he leaves his shepherding to the lion. Wallahu musta'an. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Wa jazakumullahu khairan. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us upon correct guidance and that Allah makes our children firm and strong and steadfast upon the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they are a benefit to themselves and a benefit to this religion and a benefit to their parents. Wa jazakumullahu khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.